What is your explanation for why no one on the pro-Palestinian, anti-Israel side is yelling and screaming to Hamas, please make a deal, please make a deal to help the Palestinian civilians? I think there are probably two reasons, Dan, that I see. One is that uh, it, Israel has been pretty clear that it is only seeking for the, or only offering for the time being a uh, temporary ceasefire, after which they would likely resume military operations in the Gaza Strip. And, uh, you know, the students support a permanent ceasefire um, so that we don't find ourselves back in this same situation uh, with, you know, Palestinians being displaced and being killed in large numbers. Uh, after, you know, after a few weeks lapse. That's what we, we did have, uh, a temporary ceasefire in November, and then we've seen tens of thousands of Palestinians killed after that. So uh, I think that's one reason. The other reason, I think, is that the students don't see uh, October 7th as the beginning of this conflict. Um, it is the latest chapter in a long-running dispute, and primarily one which has, in, in which Israel has caused the violent displacement of Palestinians from their lands, beginning in 1948 and continuing essentially without pause until today. All right. So, it's so going let, on let, in let me West so, Bank. let me go through them uh, both. Yeah. All right. So number one, you're saying basically sure. it's not a good enough deal, which was my point before about. Oh, you know, it's not a good enough deal for Hamas, and as a result, we're not going to call on them to ask for a ceasefire. The second point with regard to what the students are asking for, there is no way that, that if October 7th hadn't happened, that we would be having these kinds of protests around the country. No way. And to suggest, oh, this is about divestment. Of course it's not. I mean, it's connected. But this is about October 7th and the reaction. Let me ask you then to respond then to Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. This is what he said today about the proposal. Let's listen. Yeah. Hamas has before it a proposal that is extraordinarily, extraordinarily generous uh, on the part of Israel. And in this moment, the only thing standing between the people of Gaza and a ceasefire is Hamas. They have to decide, and they have to decide quickly. That seems to me spot on, but your response? Well, you know, we, we, that's spin, basically, really? and that's an attempt to put pressure on Hamas, um, and Anthony Blinken, and I'm sure, horrible? has isn't his reasons Isn't that horrible for... that people would put pressure on Hamas? How dare they put pressure on Hamas, right? What an outrage no, that not, is. I'm not... I'm, I'm not making any evaluation of that. I'm just observing that that's the case. And we have had frequent circumstances in which our, our uh, politicians, including President Biden himself, have essentially uh, uttered Israeli talking points and, you know, supported Israeli positions. And this seems to me like another example of that. Again, because you don't like the deal. Again, I just don't get it, right? If the claim is we've got to protect civilians, and let's even just assume the offers for six weeks, six weeks to allow humanitarian aid, all the issues with the quarter. By the way, we've been told that the deal very well, if the hostages are released, could lead to a permanent ceasefire. But again, it's not worth it, right? It's too, we have it too good right now. If you're Hamas, you're the center of everything. You've got all these left wing nuts supporting you. Why would you want to make a deal? You get the final word. I, I, no, I, I don't I don't think it's nuts at all. I mean, I think they 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 realize that they need a permanent ceasefire, and that's what they that's what they have to hold out for. You're right that the that the um, hostages are being used as bargaining chips. That's you know that's Hamas's leverage. Um, that's that's uh, that's accurate, uh, but that's all they have. They certainly don't have the yeah. military wherewithal Hamas, to, uh, know. you know, to, to. I know we got to feel bad for the poor Hamas folks. All they have is these hostages as leverage, and we got to feel sorry. Anyway, I told you to get the last word, so I'll shut up. George Bisharat, thank you for coming back on the program. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider, and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.